noise, you say. You've got this constant noise. What did you say? I'm having trouble hearing you because of all the noise. Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from K7KQ. Now, this is one of those questions that got delayed in the mail by four years. So, we'll see what we can do. I'm sure he's already solved his problem, but some of you may be having the same problem, so let's see what we can do. He likes 10 meters. It's his favorite band. Four years ago, it would have been an up-and-coming band. Now, as the sunspot cycle starts to fade away into nothingness, 10 meters won't be quite as exciting. But he has an ICOM 718, which is their uh, beginner rig. It's a venerable rig, been around for a very long time. I've talked to lots of people who have them, and they like them. It's a straightforward rig to operate and has all the usual bells and whistles that you would expect. Now, he has an attic antenna, 10 meter antenna. So it's five meters or about 15 feet long. That's not real long. And he's got it up above the uh, ceiling joist by about six feet. Okay, and he brings the coax down into his shack. And he's getting some strange noises that seem to vary a little bit with frequency. He did the usual thing that you would do. That is, shut the power off to the whole house run the radio with a battery, 12 volt battery, okay? And that should give you your quietest. If you're still hearing the noise, then the source is outside of the house in some way, shape, or fashion, unless there's something like the internet or something that, that is uh, creating noise that's on even though you've turned the power off to the house. He sees some very interesting things. If he's getting S9 noise and he hits the 20 dB, that should be about three S units of attenuation. But he says it takes the noise all the way down to about an S0, which is very unusual and strange. It should take it down by 20 dB, not completely eliminate it. So um, something odd is going on. He's got this attic antenna, which is about 15 feet long or five meters. And he's got his wire coming down about six feet to the attic floor. This is coax. And then he's running it along the floor in this manner in the same plane as the antenna. Now he's put ferrite beads down here to see if he can possibly eliminate it. One of the first things I would suggest to him, put those ferrite beads up here. Okay, maybe a bunch of them. And what this will do is keep RF common mode from coming back down the outside of the coax. Another thing, and he, since he makes no mention of it, is grounding. What does he do for grounding? Now, I have had a situation where the addition of a ground made a big difference. I had a, a radio and it had a coax that went out hf 9v that's a nine butternut okay this was grounded really well okay i had all this coming back into here and had s9 noise and i went hmm this can't be right i had a place in the coax where I had a uh, connector to connect two pieces of coax together. So uh, this was going right near my grounding wire. So I just touched the two together, the noise went away. I mean, I have very low noise right now. We can look and see what I have. Let's go to 10 meters. The noise that I'm getting down here is not very much. It shows an S5. FT8. Okay, and it's turning on and off like FT8 normally would. Now, you'll note that the signal shows up very well on the waterfall, and there's really not much else on the waterfall. So, and you can see the S noise goes down almost to an S2 between uh, the signals. So let's just wait for that to quit here, which it will in a second, because that's only 15 seconds long, and you see it drops way down. 
Okay, so I have very low noise on 10 meters. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this took the noise way down to, you know, like an S2 or an S3, simply by grounding. If your station is properly grounded, you may find that a lot of your problem goes away. Now, here's how you want to do that. You bring in the cable from the attic, okay, and you bring it, I don't know, on an outside wall, whatever, you can come down here to a ground rod. And right here at the ground rod, you install a lightning arrestor like this one. This is a TT30 G50, which is a very popular lightning arrestor and would work for you just fine. You can get them high power, low power. If you're just running your 718, the lower power version would do. That can handle up to about 300 watts. Note, the inside goes through, but the outside of the coax attaches to the outside of this, which you've got firmly bolted to your ground rod. What I did at first was simply put this next to the ground rod, put a hose clamp around here and tighten the living daylights out of that. This is stainless steel, by the way, so that makes it a little bit easier if you're going to be connecting that to the ground rod. The body itself is made of aluminum. Okay, aluminum and stainless steel go together fairly well. Copper and stainless steel go together fairly well. That does not mean there is no corrosion, but it is much reduced from what it could be. So bring it down here, and then from here, go into the house to your, your radio room, wherever that may be, okay? Now, note you've got a good strong ground here. You're going to connect a wire to here, bring it up into your shack, put a little foot-long piece of copper uh, pipe on it, strap that on there with a good hose clamp, and then the ground from here will come to the hose clamp, ground from the radio, antenna tuner, anything else you have in the shack, okay? And I also suggested those beads right up there at the top, or a one to one ballon. A voltage ballon is fine. They may, might be a little less expensive. So you can do either the chokes, which creates a choke ballon, which keeps the common mode currents off the outside. What I suspect may be happening if you don't have a ground here and your lightning arrestor, which you want anyway, that you may be bringing common mode currents down here, which are getting into the radio and causing mischief. Okay, we call that RFI. Now, this could be the kind of thing where the attenuator stops the common mode noise from going much further in here, which may explain why putting 20 dB of attenuation in here will make it seem better. Now, you don't want to operate with 20 dB attenuation. That's a little over three S units. And so that'll bring the signal down quite a bit. Of course, it will bring the noise down too. And it is, after all, the signal to noise ratio that makes the difference, okay? I hope you find a solution to this, and I hope that that solution involves grounding. Now, there are a couple reasons for grounding. One is safety, okay? Even in the attic, that can pick up quite a bit of, if lightning strikes the house, it can pick up quite a bit. And you want that shorted to ground before it gets. The way these things work is there's a little gas discharge tube in here. It's a really tiny little thing, but it shorts over in the event of a lightning strike or too high a voltage. Turns out that the voltage across a spark is not 20 to 30 volts, okay? And so that will protect the front end of your radio. All bets are off if you get a direct strike on your antenna, but which I've had, by the way, vaporized the antenna. Uh, but fortunately, I had the radio set aside. It wasn't connected to anything, not even ground. I did create a problem in my antenna tuner, my power supply. My modem was also burned out, as was the garage door opener. So it was a little potpourri of things. And I know it was a direct strike because my neighbor across the street saw it, saw it actually happen. So there you have it. I hope that that will give you something that you can work with. Okay, put the beads up at the antenna to keep the common mode currents off of the coax outer shield and 
run it through a lightning arrest or attach to a ground rod. Now, the book that talks all about grounding and bonding for amateur radio is this one from the ARRL, which is easy to get. It's the second edition. Get the second edition because quite a bit has been added. Grounding and Bonding for the Radio Amateur by H. Ward Silver in 0AX. There's a lot of stuff in here. So the first reason is safety. The second reason it can help with stray noise by getting that stuff down to ground. I suspect that could really help you. So we'll give it a try. So there you have it. Now, we have a special going on right now. If you join Patreon at any level, or if you upgrade any level in Patreon, or if you do it through PayPal, become a new PayPal supporter, there's instructions on the website, or become a channel member, or anything like that, or if you offer a large tip, we will send you a genuine U.S. currency $2 bill. These are not seen often in circulation, but we have a source, and we will send you one of these. You can frame it on the wall, spend it, show it off to your ham club members, or whatever you would like. $2 bill, and yes, this is legal currency. If you see a $3 bill, it's not. So there you have it. Until next time, 73.